I had everything recorded and I was going to post this review, but I couldn't help but feel that I may not have given this inverter a completely fair shake, and uh, I'm going to do at least one more test here to uh, just to make sure that I'm giving this the best possible chance of functioning. In my previous tests, I had uh, connected the inverter with two sets of 4 gauge cable. Uh, one was 10 feet long and one was 5 feet long. So this time I did uh, two things to improve my chances. I have it connected with 4 gauge cable with both lugs and both of these cables are about 2.5 feet long. Uh, one's actually 2 feet, one's 3 feet. Uh, this one I have connected straight up to two batteries in parallel. These are deep cycle batteries rated for 550 cold cranking amps each. I uh, mean they're not true deep cycle batteries but that's beside the point. I know that both of these are in good shape <clears throat> so it's connected to those two batteries through about two feet of four gauge cable and I also have it connected through about three feet of four gauge cable over to this same automotive battery that I had before. And I have my 45 amp power supply connected as well. So I'm giving this uh, every possible chance of working. I'm just going to redo some of the same tests. I have my three resistive loads here. 1500 watt heater, 1500 watt heater, 1000 watt heater, and uh, I'm going to see if this thing is really capable of 2500 watts. I also have my clamp meter connected up so that I can see if it draws uh, 320 amps or more, which is what it's fused to. Uh, really, realistically, if you try to draw more than about 300 amps through those fuses and the elevated temperatures inside this box, you're going to run into trouble. They'll probably trip, uh, and you'll have to replace the fuses. But uh, in any case, I have uh, a couple of these heaters plugged into the inverter and one heater plugged into this power strip and I'm measuring the uh, voltage here at this power strip similar to before, but uh, this has a 15 amp breaker in it and I'm afraid that'll trip if I'm actually able to reach the full 2500 watt rating. So what I'm going to do is run each of these, turn all three heaters on high to see what happens to my voltage and uh, when I figure out what the maximum load this thing can sustain is, I will take my uh, kilowatt meter here and uh, test each heater one at a time at uh, that voltage droop and then add them all add them all up and uh, I'll see what uh, output power this thing was capable of. I really don't think that anybody is ever going to have a situation better than this. Two or three feet of four gauge cable in each lug connected to three batteries which I know all three of them are in good shape and a 45 amp battery charger. I really think that this is absolute best case now. Nobody's going to do anything better than this, so we'll really see what this is capable of now. So I'm just going to, uh, for first test, I'm just going to put the camera here and uh, turn one heater on high. There's 1500 watts. The voltage did not droop. Turn the second one on high. It did droop slightly. The load meter shows everything but one bar and I'm drawing uh, about 260 amps from the battery. I'll turn on this 1000 watt heater now. And the voltage did droop somewhat now. This meter bar is uh, maxed out and uh, I'm drawing about 290 amps. So I am going to uh, try these heaters one at a time in this power strip and uh, add up the wattage rating that I'm getting out of this inverter. And uh, I'll get back to you with that result. I finished the test. I uh, traded uh, plugs between this kilowatt so I could measure the wattage and uh, the output of here so that all three were always plugged in but I only plugged one into this and then I just added up the totals and I found with uh, all three of my my heaters on it uh, did pull about 2580 watts out of the inverter so it did supply 2500 watts However, that was at 100 volts output voltage. The output voltage started to droop um, well before the 2500 watt level. And uh, 100 volts is not really usable output voltage, so I would still say that it's incapable of providing 2500 watts as advertised. The input voltage at the terminals was around 11 and a half volts, so there was ample voltage there. But uh, it still couldn't do it. Um, and once again, this peak, completely meaningless. It obviously couldn't do it. So I wanted to see what this thing could provide with this monster battery setup at uh, a usable output voltage. So I and just increased, uh, increased the load here until the output voltage sagged to about 110 volts from 115. And uh, I added up the load total there and I got uh, right around 2000 watts, 2025 when I added them all up. 
So once again I'm finding that this inverter is capable of about 2000 watts and that's it. But uh, one more thing that I noticed it is now fairly warm just from that very short test. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to uh, put about a 2000 watt load on it, maybe a little bit less, and uh, just let it run for a while and see what happens. It's supposed to be thermally protected but uh, I don't know if I'll get it hot enough to actually shut down. Um, it's not very warm in my house right now. It's less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, I'll let it run for a while and make sure that it doesn't uh, destroy itself or something. I ran the inverter at about 2000 watts for 15 minutes, and during that time the only thing that got uncomfortably warm were my 4 gauge cables. Uh, they got uh, about 70 degrees Celsius, which is, is getting up there, so I terminated the test for that reason. But uh, that shows that you really do need two sets of cables. Make sure you use both of the lugs if you really want to get the full power out of this. Uh, but uh, the outside of the inverter at least uh, stayed uh, relatively cool. I think it's about uh, 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, the air outcoming air from the fans here was uh, around 110 Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius. But uh, So the outside stayed fairly cool. Uh, the way it's constructed, the, uh, the inside Probably got quite a bit warmer than the outside, but uh, it didn't go into uh, a thermal shutdown condition or anything like that, and I didn't open it up to inspect the inside, so I really don't know what was going on in there, but uh, it did output 2,000 watts for about 15 minutes, and uh, it survived and it didn't shut down. 